when I went to a conference, I wore I'm a Zionist badge. Oh, right. I didn't really know. I didn't know what Zionist was at that time. And I didn't give a shit. Yeah. Um, for me, a Zionist means you believe in the homeland for the Jews. That's yeah. all it means. Yeah? I'm a Zionist. Yep. I'm a Zionist. I don't yeah. care. I believe the Jews can have a homeland. There's 55 Islamic nations. Why can't the Jews have one? Yeah. Why not? It's historically their land. I've done the whole, I, I've done all the tours. I've done all the research. I went to the dispute, the, um, you know, the new, where they build, building on the land. So you've got seven families. They build yeah. them. These are the these are why we can't have peace apparently. There's outside not, the West Bank or outside in, the, West, in the Bank. West Bank. So I went there, yeah? yeah. I went there and I went on to these and basically you've got eight or nine families who have took a bit of desert and they've made it beautiful. Okay. They've put it's all greenery. It's like they've brought life to where there was nothing. That's why I went there. So I spent time on the camp. I, I, I saw everything when I was there. I went to look at every avenue, to every argument. Um, and as I said, like I risked my life to do it, to to understand, to come back. And understand. And do you know what fascinated me? There's about a thousand young Arab Muslims. They're racing camels. And I, that's when I got the, and there's a geezer with machine gun there. And I've got the I, I, love, I, I love Israel t-shirt. So I said, stop the car, stop the car. So we stopped the car and I got out of the car and I went over to where just to watch all these Arabs racing camels and that. There's all Jews sitting with their skull caps having a picnic. Yeah. I thought you couldn't do that in London. You couldn't do that in London. There was no animosity between the two groups or the people. There was none. None. Yeah. A Jewish family with a thousand young Muslims in London wouldn't sit in a picnic like that because they'd get grief. Yeah. Mm. I guarantee you. So that it was very different. It works better in Israel. I bet, yeah. The, 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 Muslim, the Muslim Jew thing works better in the state of Israel than it does with thousands of young Muslims than it does in, in the UK. Tell me about Andrew Tate because did you grow up in, is he around the same age as you? Did you know him? Uh, Andrew Tate's from Luton, my hometown. So Andrew Tate's from Luton as well. There must be sank in the water of Luton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luton is such a town, man. What a bad town. Seems like it, yeah. Great town. Stacey Dooley as well. Stacey Dooley. We can get on to her in a minute, but yeah, Should tell me about Andrew Tate. Uh, should we start with Stacey? Do you want to start with Stacey? Mm. Why? No, nah, actually, I don't want her to come off. You don't want to what? I know Stacey very well. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I do. So, okay, well, let's talk about that. We can get on to Andrew Tate in a minute, because... I, I saw your speech. So Stacey went to do a documentary um, about Luton. Yeah, didn't and, you, you? and you and you you mentioned that in your Oxford speech. Yeah. By the way, were, were you nervous at all doing that? I would, have been, I would have been shitting myself. I was shitting myself. So tell me a bit about Stacey Dooley. The reason Stacey Dooley is important is because that documentary made it was on BBC Three. It was it wasn't that long ago. Was it was twenty twelve? Was it? I think. Stacey yeah, twenty twelve. Highly easy, wasn't it? Right, and that nowadays, I mean, I showed a friend the other day. I said, "Have you ever seen this?" And it was Stacey. I remember watching it at the time. Stacey goes through Luton, and she's basically being attacked and screamed at by uh, extreme Muslims. And nowadays, BBC Three, BBC, you know, Channel Four, that. not a million years. Do you know what? I'm not going to even uh, with Stacey because I probably joked a bit earlier. Stacey's from Luton. She went to the school my wife went to, ex-wife went to. I know her. I was best mates with her ex-boyfriend. I grew up with him. Two of her ex-boyfriends. Right. Um, I know her very well. So when she come to do the documentary, she come with the BBC producers and we met in a hotel. I, I stood her up twice. I didn't turn up twice. And uh, sounds, just, sounds like you. Sounds like me. <laughs> no, it's because I thought my wife would be unhappy in me meeting up with Stacey. Oh, really? At the time. So that's why I didn't turn up. Is that why? Pussy whipped. So I didn't turn up. And then in the end, I thought, no, I need to tell the story. So when I met Stacey, she sat down with the producers. She said, Jax, I know you. You're not racist. I know that. I know that. I said, I know Stacey, yeah? Like, like, she goes, what's going on? Because she'd left Luton three years prior. And she got it. St Stacey, Stacey knows us all. She knows Luton. She knows the problems in Luton. She knows them. And I'm not going to, and then I had the Daily Mail about two years ago. You know, when it blew up, when, when things blew up for her and she went on the top of, um. Dancing thing. Dancing on ice. Yeah. And did she run off and had an affair, didn't she? Did she? She ran off with the bloke, I believe. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Whatever. Right. But they, I got a phone call. They were looking for me in Luton, the papers. I said, what do you want? And they had heard stories that they wished to run and they wanted me to confirm. And I said, you're trying to ruin her. You're trying to ruin her. I said, I'm not participating in this at all. You know, there's zero chance of me commenting. So I shouldn't even try. There's zero chance of me commenting on ruining that girl's life, which is what you're now intending to do. Fuck, I hate the media. I hate the media. How does she, because she seems like a really nice person actually, but how did she sort of get away with doing that documentary back then? Was it just a different time? And she, she couldn't say stuff like that now, could she? That she's concerned about Islam. No, she couldn't. Um, yeah, things, the censorship's gone, it's got worse, hasn't it? What, look, you, the people who oppose us, you, you celebrate our censorship, you celebrate the attacks against us, the cancellation, losing the jobs. 
The goalposts are continually shifting in what you can and can't say. Started with open border immigration. You can't talk against vaccines. You can't talk against transgenderism. You can't talk about... So you may think you're on the right side of free speech now, but at some point mm -hmm. you may find yourself on the wrong side. So long as we allow the, the, the authorities to dictate what we can and can't say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pro vaccines, but I respect your right to be able to speak against them if you're concerned about them. Yeah, and and ask questions. You're not even allowed to ask questions. You're yeah. not allowed to ask questions. Yeah, I, I'm, no, I'm because only... of because of my life. I know the system lies. I know the government lies. I know the stitch up it is. So for venue, yeah. I know the media lies. Mm. If they tell me now it's raining, I will stick my head out the door to check because they're f lying. Yeah.